Hello everyone, I'm back with another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about the balance uh, overall after this new update. So without further ado, let's go jump straight into it. Now first of all, I would like to talk about the assault. In my opinion, this assault infantry is actually fair. No changes are meant uh, are going to be, uh, you know, I don't think changes on assault is logical. Alright, now given this. Of course, we were introduced to more upgrades that basically increases the uh, unit's effectivity as the game prolongs and as you rank up. Because prior to this, um, you know, infantry are basically useless at higher ranks and now they have more position in the higher rank section of the game thanks to this new upgrade. Although it is expensive, but that's not the topic. Alright, so I think this assault unit is somewhat very very fair okay to balance the it is balanced it has less speed than the uh, rifleman has a little bit more cost than the rifleman but at the expense of more power it has the anti-personal grenade which deals 218 damage to the armor type of level one and i think in my opinion that's very very fair all right now moving on to the heavy assaults as you guys can see heavy assaults is very good um their counterpart is a little bit more faster okay a little bit more cheaper but the power of the heavy assault lies in which he can fire on helicopters and actually deals more burst damage than that of the grenadiers okay and he has more armor more hp as well okay and cannot move in the forest but i think that's very fair since the ability to fire on air like helicopters, dragonflies, cyclones, or whatever, it's actually very good. Right? It's also good versus dealing with armadillos and jaguars. Given that the jaguars are not on march mode, of course, all right, it's very effective. Even on same faction battle, it is effective. Now, we move on to the fire assault. Now, the fire assault is... <laughs> Just look at the amount of HP it has, 34, and it's not even maxed out. I have it maxed out for previous upgrade prior to the uh, new upgrade introduction. So it is basically maxed out for that rank or for that upgrade or update. Okay, now moving on is that its HP pool is ridiculous. He has been buffed, I don't know how many times now, for like 5 times. He has 60 speed walking. All right, and that is him without jumping. Now we all know now, uh, we all know by now that the flame assault are immortal when he is or while he is on air. Say for example, he jumped, then yeah, it's basically a bad idea to engage him. Okay, now just an example for uh, flame assaults. Here goes. Let me just show you. So yeah, you actually saw that video, short video right there. That's just an example of how imbalanced it is or pretty much how buggy it is. Previous uh, to this version or prior to this version, flame assaults do take damage when a Jaguar is firing at it while it's in midair. Now it's completely immortal. Yeah. Alright, so I think that needs to be changed or needs to be fixed rather. But the balance overall on Fire Assault is pretty much insane. I think a little nerf will be sufficient. Alright, or will be good for him. Now we move on to the Fortress. Now I heard a lot of Confederation units on Discord and uh, on Facebook, WhatsApp, QQ, name the social media, I'm there. So basically they are saying that you know that fortress are so useless it's not good it's only good against infantry well okay first of all it can detect minefields given that you upgraded this you can only detect the minefields and once the minefield has been detected it will stay revealed and then your units can force fire at it at a safe distance all right now when it comes to well anti-infantry <laughs> 
worry no more if, if your enemy has a lot of infantry, especially riflemen at the start. You just need to produce him at the very start, at the start of the battle to get him going more onto the big container at the start before the two minute mark, okay? And he is very, very useful. It takes three coyotes to uh, destroy this guy right here. And the uh, three coyotes takes longer to produce and are more expensive than the fortress itself. Okay, so I think overall the fortress is has a good balance although I may ask for a little speed buff just get it to speed 50 and I think we're all good with the balance department on fortress speed of 50 would be super nice now as for the machine gun I have no quarrels to it the flame uh, the flamethrower have no quarrels to it so it's all good and well now we move on to the hammers okay <laughs> okay all right well hammers all right first of all i've been saying or a lot of top rank resistance are saying before or prior to this new update is that the hammers are simply too strong at higher ranks with this update which increases the overall hp and armor of all units available to art of war 3 for both factions basically the hammers became op they have the similar they have similar speed to that of a jaguar and cost 130 you can produce two types of this guys right here and can uh you guys can produce three hammers at a time from hq level three whereas you can get only a uh, one jaguar at a time and of course jaguar is not the only counter we have grenadiers we have dragonflies and so on but those are not really effective against a bunch of hammers on hq3 hq4 hq5 and what's good about these things is that it is very tanky given their numbers and with a shield they're basically like that of a normal Zeus without a shield so yeah it's very bad balance okay I think that increasing the production time and limiting the the factory to just level 2 or 2 level 2 vehicle factory at HQ level 3 prevents the hammer spamming unless you have HQ 4 and, 4 and above for you to spam the hammers and that gives it more balance now i've actually tested the hammers versus armadillo and one versus one right after this new update man the hammers destroy the armadillos with no sweat just that okay so this basically needs nerf i'm not saying that it needs nerf when it comes to the hp armor or firepower or anything like that it just needs a little bit of nerf when it comes to production time all right, and obviously its uh, ability to be spammed on HQ level three with basically three vehicle factory. Uh, I think limiting the vehicle factories to level two, uh, two level two vehicle factory would be a nice balance for hammers. Now we move on to the Zeus. Mm. Okay, we have this is very controversial since of course you know Zeus is basically too strong. All right. Now, the problem is this is that it comes with, or it, with the exchange of movement speed. I think raising the movement speed to 46 would be super nice. And the range is all but the same, so it's all good. Just that the speed, a little bit uh, buff on the speed. But when it comes to the HP and the armor, hands down, no sweat. Burst damage is good. Okay, moving on to the Typhoon. Hmm, well, okay. Typhoons are all good okay it's very good especially against resistance hawk okay I, I think it's very good okay um just a slight nerf on its damage and accuracy just looking at the accuracy it's 99 are you seriously kidding me it's even more accurate than the anti-air tower are you serious and this is stationary defense so what have you man <laughs> okay I think a balance on the typhoon needs to be a little bit more on the accuracy and also on its uh, damage because it pretty much kills hawks easily all right easily okay torrents balanced okay hands down this unit is balanced oh that this is my opinion energy shield okay the energy shield when it comes to the energy shield I'm not entirely sure um, how the energy shield, uh, energy shield does, you know, the energy shield is a very good stuff, okay, very good unit, 
prolongs the uh, durability or actually increases the durability of all your units in, in whatsoever. Now, the problem lies in the increased armor and HP of all units per confederation. Basically, the energy shield became more effective as to reduce the damage taken by all units. And I think a slight nerf on the effectivity of the shield. Alright, protection uh, from the shield. Because basically, I can win 1 versus 2 with my Zeus shield and Typhoon versus Jaguar, Chameleon, and Porcupine. And I don't even target the Chameleon itself. I just destroy the units inside because that's just how it works. You know, I have enough skill to destroy the units inside and basically <laughs> ignore the Chameleon. Let it live, you know. Alright, so yeah, that's just my opinion. But I think aside from that, everything's good on the shield. Cyclones, oh man. Okay, I know we had to change on Cyclones. Now it already is, uh, it's already back to how it was, three command points. However, it's tankiness, man. It's tankiness. Mine is not even maxed out, but do I even have to? Like seriously? I mean, even with this kind of upgrade right now that I have on it, it's very, very effective against Jaguar, Chameleon, Porcupine, regardless if you have a ton of Chameleon or Porcupine. It will still go inside the fog and it can act as a meat shield versus uh, porcupines so that your vertex can fly in and destroy revealed units and I've already had a introduction in that so yeah I think a slight nerf on the HP would be nice okay vertex okay wow vertex overall is very good I know it is uh, its feature is that of the speed okay it's speed but man i mean with just a uh, small difference of hp versus the hawk its speed is unjust and i think either buff the hawk hp even more or you know like <laughs> nerf the speed of this or basically improve the anti-air projectile like the missiles it needs an increase in speed and so on but when it comes to Vertex ignoring anti-air of uh, both faction, alright, I played a bunch of tournaments and I've used Vertex and uh, regardless if the enemy has a ton of Typhoon, basically all command points needs to be allocated to Typhoons in order for you to defend a Vertex in the same faction. But when it comes to the resistance, you have 20 Vertex, kill the HQ5, and run away with just a few losses. One or two, three Vertex died. And that's it. I mean, that's not even called balanced, okay? So, yeah. I think it's either ne needing a nerf or basically just uh, increase the buff on those anti-air. Alright? Meaning the missiles. Okay? Thor. <laughs> okay. Now, I've shown this several times on my stream. Using a Thor, it basically never dies. Okay, right after bombing, instead of using a service or a fuel boost, use a recovery boost to recover the HP, and they're basically up and good to go. For another bombing one, once the fuel is uh, refueled, the HP is also nearly full, and basically that prevents it from dying. And one of its feature is that it's speed. Okay, 30, 30 uh, speed difference than of the Hawk is a bad idea. It needs less speed okay but other than this the bombs are all good okay the bombs are yeah there are actually four bombs but the bombs themselves each bomb has more damage than that of the bomb of the albatross so i think overall it's good delta okay the delta in exchange for the range of the naval strike boost being removed it has plus one range with the naval attack boost and it has now more damage because of the naval attack boost and pretty much deals an insane amount of damage regardless if it's a rifleman or whatever it will die okay so basically you need a gun tower and eight delta can kill one gun tower easily although of course that's just 8v1 so that's not a good example but still you can still rush delta and in my opinion a slight increase on the delta speed is needed just give it 70 speed for god's sakes you know, I mean, the Kaiman is a light vehicle, yes. Can put minefields, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, man, the firepower of the Kaiman with its machine gun and speed is justifiable and its cost. However, the Delta, 
60 speed or 66 at max or 64 i i forgot but just give it 70 speed i mean seriously on large ocean maps delta stand no chance for collecting containers given that the naval scouting boost gives plus 20 percent speed on the cayman which gives it like around 120 or yeah 120 speed that's insane all right so just give it a little bit more speed and sacrifice the damage a little so it will be balanced because if it has more speed and it can move on ground or how about making this make it slower on land yeah <laughs> all right going over to the vikings um looking at it here hands down yes it has no anti-air but basically it's very good okay it's very good it has one purpose to kill navy units and it does that pretty well hands down poseidon okay i saw or actually hear a lot of people on discord saying oh poseidon needs buff poseidon needs buff on anti-air etc etc well i've tested and uh, yeah i've actually read some tests uh, on poseidon and also saw that uh six poseidon kills 20 plus uh dragonfly 12 hawks died to six poseidon okay and uh yeah so it doesn't really need a buff for all i need uh, for all i care about it needs a little nerf on its hp because it's super duper tanky and it costs you know a lot a little bit cheaper than that of the barracuda for its uses it's very very convenient okay so yeah very convenient to use very easy to use you just have one purpose tap there and it will destroy the target without even caring whatever okay now as for the buildings it's all good now we move on to the resistance okay so we're back and it's the resistance basically speaking nothing needs to be changed on the rifleman although i would highly recommend that you improve the electro gr smoke grenade okay not the grenade itself but how it is thrown because if the target is moving the grenade simply does not hit the target okay yeah regardless of whatever it is except for zeus torrent and typhoon because those units are slow but aside from that it does not hit its target so that's bad okay improve the accuracy of the smoke grenade or the way the projectile is moving when thrown by the rifleman moving to the grenadiers okay grenadiers are very good they have one purpose is to destroy tanks and ambush all right so yeah two purpose overall so it's very balanced due to the fact that yes it deals a lot less damage than than the heavy assault okay and also its power lies on the surprise attack it can hide on bushes and it has more speed but cannot attack helicopter so it's balanced ah uh, okay do i even have to mention this what is this what is this called um oh my god i forgot what is this unit oh this is the sniper oh i forgot okay now this sniper is so useless at high rank that nobody even bothers using it most of the time snipers are only produced for the sake of contract that's it not good versus same faction not good versus can fed whatever it's just there okay filling up a slot for the unit now here's my advice if you're not going to change this just remove it overall or change it to a better unit a different unit yeah because at lower ranks yes i agree hands down snipers are very useful at lower ranks but going beyond rank 14 nah forget it all right so yeah coyotes prior to the update coyotes are good for scouting but that's only its purpose that's it scouting all right although i gotta say fortress is the same but man seriously okay now i think it really needs a buff when it comes to the machine guns okay it, it needs to deal more damage with the infantry because an assault can kill a coyote like seriously man anti-infantry versus infantry and the infantry kills the anti-infantry you joking right okay moving on armadillos hmm it needs buff basically 
Okay, it does less damage than the hammer. And pretty much lay minefields, which was also nerfed. So... Man, I will never use minefields, to be honest with you. Um, aside from that, yeah, it can fire on air. But it loses versus hammers and deltas. That's it. I get with this prior, uh, with this new update. Yeah, basically that's that. Uh, so it, an increase on its uh, rate of fire, meaning the salvos being released per turn, needs to be a little bit faster to act as a little bit of an increase in burst and accuracy. That's it. And a little bit of damage. Like, give it plus 10 damage and that's it. It's all good. Ah, the Jaguars. Okay. Jaguars are very good. Yes. Even my rank 21 Zeus has more HP and armor than that of the Jaguar. Although the Jaguar has the same armor of my rank 21 Zeus. Okay. 102. But it has a lot less HP. Now, given the fact that the Jaguar fires two salvos on Siege Mode, gives it a little bit more damage than the Zeus overall, given that it's rate of fire. But man, the range is also good. But we have got to stick with the basics that when it is Siege, it has less armor and it doesn't even move. Okay, so yeah. I think buffing the, the, um, the damage a little bit, especially with a shield, the Zeus are basically immortal. Alright, so yeah. Porcupines. Uh, good anti-infantry. Yes, we got that covered. However, the closer you get to the infantry, it is good because the better accuracy it will have. Overall, its accuracy is garbage. Mm -hmm. Looking at the accuracy. Below are 48 if it's on the move and 60 while stationary. Range of 8 is good still, but it rarely hits the target anyway. Okay. Now, the accuracy, if you look at, look at the damage of the Porcupine 172, even my Typhoons at rank 21 has more damage than that of my Porcupine at rank 26, and yeah, basically it's not maxed out, but still, you have got to increase it, and its accuracy is not all that bad, I gotta say, it's not bad, but increase the speed of the, the, speed of the missiles, trust me. It's going to save resistance lives because it ignores uh vertex ignores porcupines and the rest of the anti-air of the confederate of, of the resistance and reduce its cost i mean why give it a 180 give it 165 165 would be nice balance for this all right and uh, basically that's it okay hands down mammoth oh. mammoth you should just only increase the damage by a little bit. It's not fair. Previous balance, the balance uh, for the Mammoth is good. I have to say that's good. Okay, uh, to be honest, the previous Mammoth is good. But just that the fire rate or the reload time is very slow. But it's given that if you have a lot of Mammoths, it deals out a ton of damage. So it's justified. But now, no. Give it more damage. Just a little bit, okay? Not a lot. Chameleon. Hmm. Doesn't do anything else aside from hide units inside it. That's it. And if you kill the units inside, it offers no protection if you are against a skilled confederation player which can kill units inside the fog. And basically it only hides the unit, so just like me, I can ignore the chameleon and kill the unit straight up and ignore the chameleon itself. Um, yeah, leave it as it is. Dragonfly. Okay, man. Dragonfly, I don't know. Maybe it needs more range to compensate for not being able to strafe. Because a hammer, okay, I, I mean, it, it's good. It's, ha it's, it's faster than hammers, but most of the time, it will spend its time chasing hammers to fire. And that's not good. Not very efficient. Hawks. Okay. Gotta be honest here. Hawks needs a little bit more speed. Give it back to 5 450 and we're all good. Okay. Albatross. Okay, now my albatross are not maxed out for ranked 26. However, I don't even need to max it because it dies. Okay, I mean, I'm playing Confederation on Sandbox, rank whatever rank that is. Albatross just dies. That's it. Kaimans. Nothing needs to be changed. Alligators. Okay. Alligators. 
needs a little bit more buff when it comes to the burst damage because its burst damage is its only weapon against navy all right just a little bit buff it doesn't need to win a viking one versus one but the way it is right now after the update of uh balance it's not good okay trust me just increase the damage by just a little bit barracuda oh it's only good versus same faction battle not to mention it is very 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 rarely used when it comes to versus confederation because simply more cost less armor less hp although it has stealth but can be detected right i mean it would be op this will be okay if there's no means of detection but there are means of detection so increase its hp a little bit on the damage side yes it has a little bit more range but it is very slow i mean yeah give it a little bit more of a feature like being able to not block the units above it like the units on the surface needs to not be blocked by a Psy by a barracuda occupying that certain cell below it it doesn't need to overlap okay i mean that will be a good feature to have on the barracuda okay we move on to the heroes heroes okay wasp is very good although similar to a glass cannon it dies after spraying its uh it's uh acid strike although at higher ranks it lives okay so it's good mole what is this mole what okay just kidding it needs a buff on the turrets previous nerfs made it too weak that's it it also needs a buff on its uh repairs time really needs a buff on it leviathan nerf its range of attack of the nuclear because we do have cliffs or you know mountain ridges where it can attack above the cliff with the nuclear and escape unskated um just nerf its uh damage or not not really the damage but nerf its ability to or the range of the skill activity all right nerf it that's it and then reduce the cost buff the cost reduce it you know make it fair just 1000 because this thing right here relies more on its skill than its firepower like than its weapons seriously man it easily dies okay it's very easy to kill it that's it okay move on moving on to the confederation heroes okay we go over to the cerberus okay guys cerberus i really think he needs a buff okay i really think he needs to have plus one more range more damage overall to vehicles just a little bit okay not too much he's only good in the early game and basically just a chameleon detector by jumping inside the fog and damaging some units with the skill but that's about it okay and um let's see yeah basically that's it and what i recommend is that he needs a little bit buff on the armor and the hp but don't make it to late game so increase the armor per upgrade increase this per upgrade and not increase the base armor and i think that would be all good to go okay seraphim okay seraphim is very tactical whoever uses it well it can do well but if you use it badly it's pretty much a scrap okay just making uh just making as you know just making sure that all players should understand that the seraphim is similar to that of a tactical special tactical unit wherein it dishes a lot of damage but it's not good on its own due to lack of anti-ear together with the cyclones it's very good as the cyclones can act as a cover for the porcupines until the player micros the porcupines to target the seraphim directly where in which he can land all right so it has a lot of uses can do sabotage um you know strategies and so on and then just escape it's very good unit or a hero moving on to the Ser solaris do i need an do i even have to okay now given that it is max 12 hawks is not going to be enough to take this guy uh, especially if, uh, if it's on an air raid boost but most of the time you don't really want to use this solo okay you don't really need to use that solo just have typhoons along with it and it's very much safe okay now also when it comes to 
Maybe. Man, seriously, man. It kills alligators for dinner. Yeah. And that's about it. Just, in my opinion, nerf the range. It shouldn't be 9.5. It should be at least 9. Or at maximum. Because, uh... It's just bad balance. I mean, it can kill the alligators without even... You know, without with just outranging them, and basically it's immune to barracudas torpedoes, immune to naval platforms, Im immune to minefields, only vulnerable to air. Basically, on land, the only thing that can catch this is mammoth, and it barely hits because of the speed. Now, the maximum speed of Solaris is 66, I believe. All right, it's 66, similar to that of a jaguar. So yeah, it's fast, strong burst damage, reducing its uh, range would be phenomenal, and increasing the view to 9 by or 8 by default would be very good. Alright, and that's it for this uh, today's topic for balance. This is sincerely just my opinion. I know most of you guys already know what it is, or already uh, has this kind of idea, but yeah. Thank you so much for tuning in and have yourself a great day. Do comment down below what are your thoughts into this video and don't forget to check out my previous videos to stay contained tips and tricks that can actually help you in a battle. Bye now!